This big red bus is called Bessie. She's always clean and tidy, never messy. Her driver is called Jim. And also with him is his good friend Mavis, the Clippy. Now Bessie's story is seldom told. The reason is she's very old. She's got no lights or heater, so her passengers are often cold. Now Bessie's a very special bus. She runs all day and doesn't want to fuss. She does her best from the start to the end. That's why Bessie is our special friend. The story of the day Billy went on the bus. It all started one fine early morning. Mavis was woken by her very loud alarm clock. Ding, ling, 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 ling. Oh, goodness. Can you copy that noise? Should we all do it together? Go. Ding, ling, 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 ling. There we are. So Mavis got up and she washed, cleaned her teeth and got ready for work. Mavis works on the big red double-decker bus selling the tickets. The big red bus is called Bessie and she is quite old and very special. Shall we say the name Bessie together? Here we go and Bessie! But before Mavis left for work she fed her little cats. Their names are Rupert and Ed. She didn't need to be reminded to feed them because they told Mavis that they were hungry by making big meowing noises. Shall we all do that together? Meowing noises and meow. And another one. Meow. Then Mavis said goodbye and waved to Rupert and Ed and set off for work. Meanwhile, in another street, in another house, Jim, the bus driver, was still asleep, in bed, snoring so loudly that he didn't hear his alarm clock. Let's pretend we're Jim and do some big snoring noises. Shall we all do it together? And... <sighs> and... <sighs> there you go. Lucky for Jim, he has two doggies named Dolly and Banana Anna. They wanted their breakfast and they started to bark and that woke him up. Woof, woof. Shall we do that together? Okay. Ruff, ruff. Jim quickly got ready for work and quickly fed his beloved dogs and then started running to work. When he got to the bus station, Mavis was red in the face and said, Here, you're late and we have a very special trip today. Jim said, I know I'm very late, I'm very sorry, but where is our special trip taking us to today then, Mavis? Mavis said, after we've taken people to the town market, we're going on to the British Motor Museum. Start the bus, Jim, and let's get going, we're late. Jim went round to the front of the bus and grabbed the starting handle. To start the bus, he must turn it three times. So let's count it, shall we? All together. One, two, three. Have another go. And one, two, three. Bessie the old bus started and Jim climbed up behind the steering wheel. Maybe stepped onto the back of the bus and rang the bell to let Jim know that it was safe to drive away. So let's make the bell noise. Let's all do it together, shall we? And ding, ding. Once more. Ding, ding, followed by the engine noise. Brum, brum. And now Jim has honked the hooter. Ah, ah. Right, shall we have a go with those together? Let's start off with ding, ding for the bell. Ready? And ding, ding, followed by the engine noise. Remember, it was brum, brum. Here we go. Brum, brum. And finally, it was honking the hooter, which was honk honk. Ready? And honk honk. Honk honk. And they were off. Bessie, the big red double decker bus, was away down the street to the first stop. Jim, the bus driver, drove Bessie to the end of the street and turned right. Because Bessie is an old bus, 
she doesn't have any orange flashing lights or indicators. So Jim puts out a straight right arm. See in the picture? Let's all copy Jim, shall we? Put your arms out, the right arm. Well done. Once Jim had turned right, he then carried along the road to the next bit where he had a left turn. Can you guess what hand signal he did next? Nope, not a straight left arm because his arm isn't long enough. Therefore, he does this signal instead, just like a straight arm, but then he draws an imaginary circle with his hand, just like in the picture. Let's copy Jim and do a left turn. Ready? Well done. As I approached the first bus stop, Mavis rang her bell to remind the forgetful Jim to pull over. Now we've made this noise before, haven't we? It's the bell noise and it goes ding ding. Shall we do it together now? And ding ding. Jim stopped the bus by pressing a big boot on the brake. See the picture? But Bessie the old bus had no brake lights, so this time Jim used another hand signal. This time, instead of a straight right arm, he makes a new gesture going up and down, rather like the wing on a bird flapping. This tells everyone that he is slowing down to stop. Do you want to do Jim doing the slowing down to stop arm movement? Oh, go on then. Let's all do it together. And the slowing down movement. Lovely. Mrs. Carter from the garage stepped onto the bus with a large basket of apples from her orchard. She had 10 green apples and five red apples. Mavis said, oh, those apples look very tasty. Are you going to sell them at the market? Mrs. Carter said, oh, yes, I am. But if you would like one, please help yourself and then you can tell me if they're nice and tasty. Mavis took one of the red apples. So how many of them were left? Well done. Mrs. Carter's basket of apples was, however, a bit large and she couldn't get it down the aisle, the middle bit of the bus. So Mavis kindly put the basket under the twisty stairs at the back of the bus. Mavis said, go and take a seat, Mrs. Carter. I'll look after your basket of apples. When they were all on the bus, quite safely, Mavis rang the bell again to tell Jim it was safe to drive off. Do you want to do the ding ding sound? All right, let's do it together. And ding ding. At the next stop, more people got onto the bus and some had animals and all the way they went to the town market. Mrs. Morris had a basket of chicken eggs to sell. Mrs. Austin had some homemade jams and right at the back of the bus was Farmer Evans with Billy the Goat. Well, what mischief do you think he's going to get up to? Why don't you have a chat with your grown-ups about what you think might happen next? What might Billy do? Who might he meet? If you like, you could draw a picture of Billy on the bus. You could draw a picture of what might happen or, or even a storyboard. You might even write some sentences to finish the story yourself. Find out what actually happens and see if you're right in the next instalment of Bessie the Bus. That'll be part two. And we look forward to seeing you then. Bye bye folks. <laughs>